Hello, my name is Felix and today we are here at Herrería, just 50 kilometers northwest of Madrid. Herrería is part of a network of 10 stations that integrates GUBNET, which is uh, Guadarrama Monitoring Network, an initiative that was created in 2014 to monitor subsoil and atmosphere over the region. Today we are at the lowermost station, 900 meters high, but the range of heights that we are managing goes from 900 to 2,200 meters at Dos Hermanas, which is the uppermost station of the net. They were created like five years ago. It's not a big deal, it's not a big time, but we hope that we would be able to use those data to make uh, climate change studies over the region and monitor, let's say, subsoil and atmosphere variables in a climate change context. Do you want to come with me and meet the net and meet Herrería? So let's go. Let me introduce you to Cristina. She's a technician of the network, as I am, and she will tell you about the station, the feeders, and instrumentation that integrates already. So, there you go. Thank you so much, Felix. So, today, as Felix just said, we are at Herrería, the GUBNET station located at the lowest altitude of them all. This station was designed to study the evolution of the boundary layer up to 10 meters high. Turbulent processes responsible for soil respiration and gas exchange take place within this range. Now, in order to accomplish this, this station was equipped with the following sensors. Three cups and MO meters placed at 3, 6 and 10 meters high for the measurement of wind speed. One vane at 10 meters high for the wind direction. Three thermometers at 3, 6 and 10 meters high for the temperature one thermal hygrometer at two meters high for the measurement of both temperature and relative humidity, one pluviometer that lets us measure both solid and liquid precipitation, and one radiometer to measure the four components of radiation, which are incoming shortwave radiation from the sun, outgoing shortwave radiation, that is the part of solar radiation that gets reflected on the ground, outgoing longwave radiation, that's the radiation coming up from the ground itself, and incoming long-wave radiation, which is the radiation that comes from the air, the clouds, or the ground radiation that gets reflected on the clouds. As a result of these components, albedo, or radiative net balance, can be calculated. Now, all these sensors take measurements at a frequency of 1 Hz, average to 10 minutes, However, there's this one sensor that takes measurements at the very high frequency of 10 Hz, that is, 10 values per second. The Irgazon, placed at 8 meters high, is a gas analyzer and a 3D sonic anemometer that can measure many variables such as temperature and pressure, three components of the wind, two horizontal components and one vertical component, but most of all, it measures carbon dioxide and water vapor concentrations. This allows us to calculate turbulent fluxes, heat fluxes, eddy power ions, etc. And that would be all for the, for the atmospheric sensors. Now, back to Felix, he will tell you all about uh, soil instrumentation. Thank you, Christina. Well, she has told you that we have many atmospheric sensors that track the, the atmospheric state, but we also have subsoil sensors to track how the temperature, humidity and electrical conductivity change with depth underneath our feet. So basically what we have in this station and at most of, of the stations of the network is two boreholes, one of two meters deep and the other one goes down to 20 meters. And those boreholes are basically obtained by drilling a hole into the soil, into the ground, putting a case and then filling the, the case with, uh, with uh, silicon gel. Sensors are embedded inside. And then what we have are two trenches, one of four centimeters, this is really shallow, and a deeper one of one meter, where sensors are just put into a wall. We dig like a hole, as you can see here and we insert the, the sensors into the wall, measuring temperature, electrical conductivity, and humidity. And basically, thanks to this installation, we can record temperatures and other variables inside subsoil and see how the signal of the round goes down into depth. 
And all the data that we have been talking about, like the atmospheric uh, data, the subsoil data, are recorded in a special device called Data Logger that then sent the data to us, to the physics uh, faculty that we work in, Christine and me, and where we both process the data to give support to our, our users, let's say. And we didn't want to end this excursion without an explanation of subsoil CO2 measurements. And this part we as will be explained by Rosa Inclan, uh, which is a biologist and researcher from CIMAT. So let's go to her. There are different methods to measure soil respiration. The most used is chamber method which provide direct measurements of soil respiration at the soil surface. I am measuring soil respiration using an automated portable system like our 8100 including a 10 cm chamber. The yellow case contains the CO2 detecting sensor and IRVA infrared gas analyzer. I have inserted many colors in the area of the tower in order to cover the spatial variability of soil respiration. The soil respiration measurements begin closing automatically the chamber. The equipment has internal software that calculates the soil CO2 flux, taking into account the change in CO2 concentration during the closed time. I also measure soil temperature using a digital soil thermometer with a thermopart prof. I measure the soil water content using a TDR, Tain Domain Reflectometry Equipment. 